Today it's gonna be a little bit more like, okay, I've mixed this track, here's what I've done, but we're gonna focus just on reverbs. We've got this track. We've got the strings. We've got the high strings, gonna focus on the high strings. So if you look down here, we've got this track, and this track has two cents. It's room strings and hall strings. These are these two basses here, the room strings and the hall strings. The room strings has this plugin inserted. It's an algorithmic reverb. Sometimes I use Altiverb, some, sometimes I use Spaces. Altiverb is sort of like the industry standard, like everyone uses Altiverb, but the Spaces from East West sound just as good. It has fantastic impulse responses as well. And then for the whole strings, got this plugin inserted here, which is, I'm gonna move it now, B2. I like this one a lot. I'll show a few more later on as we move to, to the other tracks. So we've got these two. Here's the strings with the, with the reverbs. All right, cool, let's bypass them. So initially, the high strings sounded like this. It feels like a big space. So it already has a little bit of room component because we also have all the libraries, like this one. From another library, also has room component. We also have this one also has room component, but it would be nice if we could make it feel like part of the same thing. Not because this is realistic, but just because I want the strings to feel like one thing. It's like putting a filter on top of all the strings tracks so it feels part of the same thing. Usually, it's a much better approach to add two reverbs. First, a little bit of room and then a little bit of hall. This is all samples, right? It's something that was recorded earlier. So imagine adding a convolution reverb is like if you could play back this track and take a speaker and put it in the Sony scoring stage and play it back and record with the mics the sound of that. That is what essentially what we are doing here. We are taking something that was already recorded in a big room and now we're taking that recording, we are adding the flavor of a big room again on top of that. And it's like, why do we need to do that? and it's just trying to match the room component in all the libraries. It's for them all to feel in the same place. But it's just, it's going to be subtle. We're gonna start with the convolution reverb. So, without. With. Without. With. trying to change the character of the sound a little bit. We are modifying the sound in a way. When you are entering your studio, if it's acoustically treated, and you're talking to someone, as soon as you cross that door and you enter the studio, all of a sudden everything's drier, right? Because it's acoustically treated and it's absorbent and all that. So same thing, imagine entering a room, it's a big room, it's a big studio, and how that affects the sound. I'm gonna add a little bit more. So it was at, my, at minus 15. So now before. This is clearly too much. We don't want that much, we just want that little bit. Let's see the effect in the, in the other stems. Without, with. For this type of reverb, I'm trying to hear the, like, the, how the tone changes. Now it matches much better. Without. It's very subtle, but it's it's super, super important. Now let's add the other reverb, the whole reverb. This is the, um, an algorithmic digital reverb. Without. All right, with. Now it has that nice, even decay, long decay type of thing. Now it's like, oh, this is the, that, that this is reverb. Aha. Yes, before you add this reverb, do the other one first. Now, the typical beginner problem is to add too much reverb and making things sound too wet. It just washes out everything. Doesn't sound good. No good, no bueno. You're gonna be better off if you have no idea how to add reverbs. Not adding any reverb, just letting the music, the way it is, no reverbs, than trying to add reverbs and just, you can destroy everything that you've composed. This is too much for this style. For another style, maybe it works, but not for staccato, stinato, things like this. But something like this. 
between minus 20 and minus 15 could work. So without these reverbs, it already sounds good, it has a room component, but we want to enhance this a little bit. And so we're gonna add a little bit of room. That already adds a little bit of tail and, and, and modifies the sound in a way that makes it feel like a little bit bigger space and puts it in the same space as everything else, because we're gonna add the same one to all the other string stems. And also now reverb. Cool. For, for the room reverb, I usually choose a scoring stage. And it's either gonna be 20th Century Fox of Altiverb or the Tadeo in Altiverb as well. So that is for the convolution reverb. Let's talk about this one for a second. I'm using Mark Joanne's Cinematic Long Haul, but basically it's a it's a modified version of uh, Early Late and then Random Cathedral. This is the one that I chose and then I modified a little bit. Basically, I cut a little bit these low frequencies starting at 64, something like this. I cut a little bit. I like this one. I've been using it for a while. I like the decay. It has a double engine and basically it's two algorithms going on at the same time generating the reverb. And so when you overlap them, it has very deep, nice decay. For this piece, I wanted for all the strings to sound like a little bit like the same. I didn't need to separate the shorter strings from the longer strings. If I would, just I would shorten it a little bit. I would go for the engine A and I would bring down the time. As you can see, it's 3.1. I would bring it down to like 1.8 or something like this. All right, so that's it for the strings. I've got brass and woods. So I've got the same one for the room and the same one for... I wanted to keep it very simple here and I wanted the strings with brass to sort of like feel part of the same thing. Sometimes I, I'll separate them more. I'll separate more the shorter strings and the longer strings, brass woods and the strings like more separated. In this case, I didn't need to. So for the percussion, I've got several things. So the percussion is this blue part here. We've got timpani and then we've got the sub bomb. Sub bomb that has no, no percussion. This is some sub bomb here. And then we've got the low, mid and high percussion. The low, mid and high percussion is mostly like epic percussion, non-orchestral percussion, like the epic toms and things like this. For the timpani, I added this one. I didn't add any room because it didn't need any room. I added a little bit of whole reverb. In this case, what I've done is I used H reverb. It's a waves plugin. Sounds great. And um, it's just a whole reverb, just a different, uh, it's a different character. So timpani without, with. And see how it helps kind of like enhance the tail of the timpani which sometimes it can be a bad thing because um, it will increase the conflicting decays problem. But sometimes it's what you want. It's just one hit and that's what, that's what I want. But it's slightly different tone than the one that we've used for the strings and the, like, the melodic orchestral instruments. And now for, for the epic percussion, I wanted to separate the orchestral percussion of the epic with, with the epic percussion. In this one, for the epic percussion, I used a plates reverb. And especially for the high-pitched, I like the sound of plates for high-pitched percussion, like the piatis and the cymbal rolls and things like this. Without. With. Without, with. Because of the nature of this reverb, I like very much how it resonates with high pitch, especially metal percussion. But I also use it for melodic orchestral instruments, but I like it very much with high pitched percussion as well. Hey, you watched the video till the end, congratulations. <laughs> All right, so just comment with the Arma Composer hashtag so I know that you've watched the video till the end. And also please consider subscribing if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, this does three things. First, YouTube is gonna show our videos in your homepage. They are gonna be there when you need them. Second, helps our channel grow, makes us happy to see that number increase. And three, most importantly, it lets the algorithm know that what we are doing matter. And YouTube is going to put our videos in front of composers like you that want to grow and learn. We're going to continue to post free videos to add value, but please help us reach more people. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Congrats again for watching the video till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.